What's good everybody? Welcome back to Joe's Card Stash. Today we're going to talk about what I consider to be the most important set in the UFC card hobby. Uh, you know, basketball has 86 Fleer, baseball has 52 Tops, and the UFC has 2009 Tops UFC Round 1. And I'm going to talk about why, I'm going to talk about the checklist, what you get in the packs, I'm going to show you my collection, we're going to open some packs, it's going to be amazing, please stick around. Now before we get into the round one cards, I want to take a quick break and show you guys something really cool that I got. The Goble family surprised me with something. They uh, were talking to a guy named, uh, he's on Instagram, UFC underscore bloody knuckle cards, and he's a custom sticker designer. So they asked him to design some stickers for me as a surprise, and they sent them to me. Um, so I want to show those off real quick. They're really cool. Uh, this is his logo. Uh, again, go follow him on Instagram, UFC underscore uh, bloody knuckle cards. Um, you know, if you want custom stickers made, please hit this guy up. It's really, really dope what he does. Uh, this is what he sent me. Um, I have a keychain here with my logo, my you know Joe's Card Stash logo, and on the back I have a QR code, so you can scan that and go straight to my YouTube page. Very, very cool. And then he sent me a whole bunch of variations of stickers. You have some with mustaches, with uh, you know my face and Joe's Card Stash. Uh, very cool. And then you have um, some of these little octagons. They're like super shiny. They have stars. They're refra refractors, I guess. They're really cool. Uh, so you have these little octagons, then you have some bigger octagons that have uh, the QR code, so you can scan that, go to my site again, and then you have um, some even bigger versions, <laughs> which is really cool, you know, probably put that on my laptop or something, uh, and then lastly you just have my face, I really like these, or it's not my face, it's my logo's face, but uh, I want to stick these everywhere, I'm going to start like putting them all around town. Super, super cool. Thank both of you. That's really, really nice of you guys. I'm probably going to stick this one right here. So when I'm filming this video, I know where to put the cards so you know I can make sure everything's in frame. So going to keep that guy right there. Uh, thanks again. So now let's talk about the history of 2009 Topps UFC Round 1. Uh, came out in February of 2009. I wasn't collecting back then, so all this information I get is from either you know information on the internet that's out there or talking to UFC card father Eric uh, who collected back then, and he bought cases of this stuff, so he's told me a whole bunch of things about it. Um, they were about 35 bucks a box. On uh, You had to buy them on uh, UFC.com. I think you could buy cases as well. I don't know what the cases cost, but I mean, to give you an idea of how much this has gone up, they were 35 bucks a box back then. Now they go for about $2,300 a box, so pretty good investment, I think. <laughs> um, you got three autograph cards per box. You also got three memorabilia or relic cards per box. You also got eight inserts per box. The inserts were uh, victorious debuts and also um, top 10 fights. They're actually really cool. Uh, everything was, you know, you could get short prints. You could get of the base cards. You could get uh, golds. You could get um, silvers numbered out of 288. You could get uh, one of ones that, that they had a, like a red trim. So, uh, you know, the one of ones obviously very coveted, very hard to hit. Um, there was also with the autographs, you could get red ink autos. Again, very, very coveted. They're out of 25. They're not numbered, but they, we know that they're out of 25. So also very, very hard to hit. If you hit a red auto, uh, red ink auto out of this, it's very, very coveted. Um, the inserts cards were also numbered. Um, the victorious debuts were numbered out of the gold version. You could also get reds with those that are one of ones, so you can find one of ones with the inserts. Very, very cool. Uh, there was dual autos. Um, there was also ultimate gear relics, which was like clothing, and then there was matte relics, which is pieces of the mat. All the matte relics tell you the specific um, fight that they came from, which is really, really cool. Uh, what else can you get? Uh, the base cards. So, Base cards were 100 fighters. Um, each one has two fighters listed on the card, but the first fighter is who you're looking at. Um, it's you know the main fighter on the picture, and it's always their first UFC fight. So the photo is from their first UFC fight, which makes it really, really cool. Um, and then, yeah, so lots of parallels, lots of cool stuff to chase in these boxes. Um, 
I wish I could open a full box. I've, I haven't been able to find it. It's, I mean, it's just too expensive. So I have a couple packs we're gonna open today. So why do I think 2009 Topps UFC Round 1 is the most important set in UFC card history? There's a couple reasons. Number one, it's the first officially licensed product of UFC cards. Um, Topps, which is you know the leader in all sports cards, they go back 50, 60 years. This was the first time they were making UFC cards. There had been a few other sets. There was like pride sets and a few other things before this, but for Topps to make UFC cards, this was a very big deal. And most people consider this is the first real UFC card set. And um, that's, that's huge. I mean, that, that doesn't happen very often, you know, unless you were around in the 1950s for the first top set or, you know, the first basketball set. I mean, because the UFC is such a new sport, the fact that we happen to be around when the first cards come out is very, very cool and very, very important. The second reason this is such a big deal is that every fighter, everyone who has a card in this set, it's considered their rookie card. There are basically no cards before this, so, you know, all these fighters, this is their first card, their first officially licensed card, so it's their rookie card. And rookie cards, you know, obviously are just the most coveted thing in sports cards. So this entire set is full of rookie cards, and it's full of Hall of Famers, huge, huge fighters in the history of the UFC, all have rookies in this, um, all the way down. I'm going to go over the checklist in a little while, but it's just, it's crazy how many huge fighters have rookie cards in this. When you're opening these packs, it's holy shit, this guy's rookie. Holy shit, this guy's rookie. It's, it's, it's a ton, a ton of um, really, really important UFC cards. Um, the next reason is this wasn't printed to death like cards are now. You know, Panini or even Topps now are printing these things to death. Back then, like I said, we don't know for sure, but it's probably 500 cases were made of this, which in the scheme of things is nothing. That's why, you know, they're $2,300 a box now. Is They're really hard to find. So the rarity is really, really... Uh, important to this set because it makes it so these just you know as this gets bigger and you know UFC gets bigger UFC cards get bigger you're not gonna find more of these they are they're out there what's out there is what's out there and that's gonna be what people are after and it's you know it, it makes it you know more important more valuable etc and lastly is these cards are incredibly condition sensitive um, they have black edges they weren't printed on the greatest card stock. I don't think Topps knew exactly, you know, what they were getting with these. So they kind of printed them kind of shitty, <laughs> to be honest. But it's made it so if you have high grades of these cards, the populations are so small. And, you know, people who have had these for years and years, they're sitting in, you know, uh, binders and stuff. They're getting banged up. So the chances of finding really, really clean versions of these going forward is going to be very, very hard. And it's going to make them more valuable, more important. So... The condition sensitivity helps, I think. It makes it that, you know, if you have clean versions, they're very, very rare. So that's, that's essentially why I think this set is so important. Now, let's get into the checklist because that's the other part that's crazy. So, um, you know, who are the fighters that are in this set? Um, just to list off, I'm just going to go through the people that are in the Hall of Fame that have rookie cards in here. And this is like a who's who of the UFC. You have Hoist Gracie, you have Randy Couture, you have Dan Severn, you have Chuck Liddell, Mark Coleman, Matt Hughes, Matt Serra, Rich Franklin, Shogun Hua, Frankie Edgar, Rashad Evans, Forrest Griffin, Georges St. Pierre, Anderson Silva, BJ Penn, and Michael Bisbing. Now that's just the people that are in the Hall of Fame. These are goats of the sport. Every one of them in this set is their rookie card. You have base cards, you have numbered cards, you have one of ones you can hit. A lot of these guys have autos. It's crazy. Like, I can't think of a more stacked set. I mean, it's comparable, I think, to 86 Fleer basketball. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, between 1981 or 82 and 1986, nobody made basketball cards. So there's this big blank period. So when 86 Fleer came out, it had a ton of rookies because they hadn't made basketball cards in so long. And one of those rookies happens to be Michael Jordan. So that set, it's like, you know, you open the packs and you're like, James Worthy, uh, Dominique Wilkins. There's so many Hall of Famers that have rookie cards in there. This set is just like that, but just for UFC cards. Um, other notable fighters that are in here. These guys aren't in the Hall of Fame, but they probably will be at some point. Rampage Jackson, uh, Dan Henderson, Frank Mir, Brock Lesnar, Nate Diaz, Cain Velasquez, 
And then you have non-fighters. You have Bruce Buffer, Dana White, and then you have probably one of the most expensive cards in this set is Joe Rogan. Uh, Joe Rogan just being a commentator for the UFC, but obviously podcasts, superstar, stuff like that. So his cards are actually some of the most expensive that you can get in here. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I can't say more about this set. I really think it is the end-all, be-all for UFC cards. And um, I'm going to show you my collection so far. And then after that, we're going to open up a couple packs. And who the hell knows what we're going to pull, so stick around. My goal with collecting these cards is very specific. I'm trying to find really clean versions of these guys. I'm looking for all the Hall of Famers and basically any other notable fighters. So a lot of the list I just read in the earlier segment, um, I'm looking for all of those cards that will grade a PSA 9. I've graded a bunch of these myself so far, um, but I'm not, I'm not just trying to grade these myself. It's very hard to get PSA 9s. These cards are so hard with the edges, and honestly, they come straight out of the pack sometimes, and you're lucky to get an 8. So I know that it's very hard to get a 9. So uh, if I can't get a 9, if I see one for a decent price, I'll pick it up as a single. I have no problem doing that. I've gotten these both ways. But uh, let me show you what I've got so far. Uh, the first one <clears throat> is uh, Anderson the Spider Silva, his rookie card in a PSA 9. Huge card in my opinion. Um, you know, one of the top five best fighters ever. Uh, this is his base rookie card in a PSA 9. Uh, I don't know what the pop is, but it's really, really low. Um, next card. BJ Penn, this one's huge for me. Obviously, one of the most popular UFC fighters of all time. Um, I've also photographed him, so he's on my like dual like reasons I'm collecting him. I collect everyone I've ever photographed, but he's also one of the greatest of all time. And this is his rookie card, PSA 9. Again, very rare, very hard to find. Super stoked on this one. Cain Velasquez, uh, champ. Uh, I don't believe he's in the in the Hall of Fame yet, but super important in the UFC. Um, another one, I, I believe I got a, a couple of these as gifts and I got them graded. They got PSA 9. So, uh, Cain Velasquez, Brock Lesnar, you know, obviously his wrestling career, his you know, UFC career, is just a very, very popular fighter. Um, also super cool card. I love Brock Lesnar and, uh, happy to have his rookie card in a PSA 9. Now all these are base cards. At some point, I may go after the silvers, I may go after the golds, but my first goal right now is just to get all the base cards and PSA 9s, and maybe I'll go after PSA 10s. Those are extremely hard to find, but it would be a cool project to try to do, and I have no, no timetable for this. If this takes me years to do, it's fine. It's just a hobby. you know. I enjoy it, but um, Brock Lesnar, PSA 9. I just got these. these uh, the last two I just got from my friend Luke MMA. Also is a big round one fan. He opens, you know, a bunch of packs through Chicken One of One, which is what I'm doing later today. That's how we get our packs. And uh, he got these cards, and he got them graded, and he got PSA nines, and he hit me up. He's like, "Hey, do you want these?" And I said, "Hell's yeah, I do." So Nate Diaz, this one's huge for me. I'm a big, big Nate Diaz fan, and his PSA nine, really, really cool. Um, I'm so psyched to own this. Thank you, Luke. If you guys aren't following Luke, um, He's Luke MMA Love on Instagram. Uh, I believe it's something similar on YouTube. He has great YouTube videos. One of my favorite people in the hobby. Go check him out. And lastly, the Count Michael Bisbing. Um, Bisbing in this set actually has autographs. He has relics. Uh, he has a whole bunch of stuff. But this is his base auto and a PSA 9. I love his podcast. I, he's a great champ. I'm a huge Michael Bisbing fan. So very psyched to have this. And, um, you know, hopefully with these next two packs that I open, I'll get more to add to this because, you know, I'm always looking for this stuff. And if you guys have PSA 9s, hit me up. I'm always looking to buy. Uh, but that's my collection so far. Hopefully it gets bigger. And uh, now let's, let's get to the exciting part. Let, let's open some packs. All right, now it's for the, the funnest part of the video. I have a couple packs, 15-year-old packs of 2009 Topps Round 1. These are super rare, super expensive. They're $150 a piece. Uh, I got them from Chicken One of One. If you guys don't know who Chicken One of One is, uh, go on Whatnot, follow him. He's a great UFC card breaker. But one thing he does, which is awesome, is he opens old boxes and packs of UFC cards just because he loves it. He doesn't make any money from it. But he has found a whole bunch of boxes of round one. 
and uh, he sold me a couple packs just so I could open them on my channel to make this video. So very cool. Thank you, Chicken. And um, what am I hoping for with these? Um, it's interesting. You know, I know he opened basically this entire box. So I know two of the autos are gone, two of the memorabilia cards are gone, but there's still one live auto, one live memorabilia card. So either one of those could be in here. Um, also, for some reason, I think he got like a hot box because every pack he opened, almost every pack had um, a silver out of 288, and those were really hard to get. So there's a chance there's going to be a couple of those in here, which is huge. I mean, if you hit a big Hall of Famer out of 288, that's a giant card. So that's a possibility. Um, but, you know, they, there may not be anything in these. They, they may be a bust. You're not usually getting your money back with opening stuff, but I'm just hoping to get some of the base cards I'm trying to find. Like I just talked about, like any of the Hall of Famers that I can get a PSA 9. You know, most of the time when cards come out of these packs, they're in pretty good condition. You're going to get the best condition you can possibly get. So hopefully, you know, one or two, the people I need, you know, some, some Hall of Famers uh, that I can get a PSA 9, that's all I can ask for. But... Let's just see what we get. Who knows? I mean, you know, maybe there's a one of one in here. I've never seen a one of one pulled out of this product, but if you do, my God, it's, I might faint. So let's do it. Big, please give us something great. <laughs> and let's open them. You know, honestly, and again, I'm probably not going to make my money back, but this is so fun for me. This is so much more fun than opening new product. I love like this time machine treasure hunt aspect to these old packs that you just don't get with like new tops or new panini, you know, like this stuff is just cool. So here we go. Pack number one. You got to be really careful, like I said, because they're so condition sensitive that you don't want to mess up the cards at all. So I'm going to take my time trying to open these. And here we go. Pack number one. We have... Manny Gambura, Tiago Tavares, Joe Lazon, Shane Carwin, and we have a mem card, which is George Storopoulos. And the cool thing about the mem cards in this product is they're all from specific fights. So this is from. Uh, this is from the specific featured card. So this is from the Ultimate Fighter 6 finale on 12.807. Really cool. So there's our mem card. And then we have a checklist card. And we have Mario Tamasaki. Uh, non-numbered. I think one of these should be numbered. Dan Henderson, non-numbered, and Jonathan Goulet. Dan Henderson is a card I want, so that's a really nice base card. I'm pretty excited for that one. Um, I believe Mario is not numbered. Huh. I thought one of these would be numbered. Let's see. Um, nope. 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 Matt Relic. Nope. I guess I didn't get a number card. Well, I was wrong. Uh, you're not going to get a number card in every one, but uh, happy for the memorabilia card and happy for the um, Dan Hendo. Hopefully that one can get me a PSA 9 because that will be in my uh, PC. So let's go for pack number two. That wasn't the greatest pack in the world, I will say, but maybe this one will make up for it. Come on. God, these are hard to open. There we go. And we have Kenny Florian. BJ Penn. I already have BJ Penn, but that's a really clean looking version. Mark Coleman. That's a card I really want. Uh, edges look a little rough, though. We have uh, Victorious Debuts of... Antonio Rodriguez Nagara, and that is non-numbered. Anderson Silva, rookie card, and oh, this is a goal. This is ooh, wow, that's a huge card. 
Anderson Silva rookie card out of 288. Wow. That's a monster card. I, I already have this card in a PSA 9, but it's not the numbered version. Wow. Oh my God. If I can get a 9 with that, that's huge. Um, yeah. Hells yeah. Pretty excited about that. Um, next we have... Uh, come on. We have our checklist. Then we have Jonathan Goulet, Fabricio Vardum, Rardum, Rardum, and Matt Arroyo. So, not a lot of cards I wanted, but this card is gigantic. That's a really, really big one. I'm super excited for that one. Um, I'll keep you guys updated. If this gets a PSA 9, this is fantastic. So. Well, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. It was such a fun video for me to film. I'm so passionate about this set. Tell me what you guys think about Topps UFC Round 1. Are you guys fans of it? Do you think it's, you know, a bunch of bullshit? Do you think, uh, you know, I'm full of shit? Is there other sets you think are more important? But honestly, I really do think this is a set that's going to age really, really well. Um, I think as time goes on, it's going to be more rare, more important. You know, as more collectors come in, they're going to say, okay, this is like our big set. So that's my two cents. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.